to another episode of Robo Replay. Today, we're going to be taking a look at what the top robots in the world in terms of auto EPR are doing, and see why what they're doing, why they're doing it, and how we can use their strategy decisions to influence our autos to make sure everyone else's autos are as good as they can be. This past weekend, I was at the Waterbury District event in New England, and so I didn't really have chances to check out nearly as many matches as I'd love to. If you guys saw matches that you'd like me to break down or analyze or check out strategies in any way, please leave them down below as I will be looking for matches as I wasn't able to see nearly as many as I wish I could have. With that, let's get into it with our first team, Team 2767, Strike Force. This is a week one event that Strike Force is playing at, and they're still one of the highest ranked auto EPA teams in the world, showing you how incredible their auto is. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that Team 2767 actually has their bumpers on the starting line here, instead of inside, as we've seen a lot of robots throughout this entire competition season do. And the reason that these teams, that you're, and you're going to notice this from most of these top teams, is that they have their bumpers on the tar starting line, is that because it means they have the least amount of robot that they're going to have to move, which it just means that they get to have the most amount of time saved, right? Because their robot's already over here, instead of being over here. So, let's watch 2767. And the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to go for this branch over here. And the reason that they go for this branch over here, instead of, let's say, this branch, or maybe a far branch, is because what they've essentially decided to do is say, we want to take the branch that is most likely for us to score and not influence our partners. And since the majority of people are going with a left, center, right auto starting position, and in turn, a left, right, and a center, left, and right auto, then if Strife Force were, for example, to take this branch instead, although it might be closer and it might be a little bit faster, what they might end up doing is colliding with the center robot, right? Because if their bumpers come out to about here, then the center robot might end up moving them a bit, and even though they might get the score here, their next autos, when they're collecting from the Coral Station, are could be nearly as effective because they'll be slowed down and rotated by the center robot. Which is why most teams are choosing to have their One Piece L4s start at this branch. Because it causes the least interference possible and gives you the closest path. As all you have to do is rotate a little bit and you're immediately at the station here. Now if we keep watching, we're going to see 2767 go to the Coral Station. And another thing I want to note is that most teams, as you're going to see, are going to collect from here if they're collecting from the Coral Station, as you don't want to really end up going to any of this area of the Coral Station, as that's a lot of time lost. And in auto, every second gained is a second earned. And they're going to use this to their maximum ability. So they're going to be taking as fastest lines as they can, right? You saw them go from here immediately to the closest place they could collect from, and then they're going to go straight back and forth. So we'll see them. Go right in front of themselves, and up, and then they'll go back, again, the fastest line possible, and then right in front of themselves, and up. And the reason that they're doing these two branches is because it's just the simplest. Right? You have your robot already positioned in this way, all you have to do is translate and move forward a bit, and then your robot's already ready to score in that position. There's no reason to take these two branches first, as your robot's already ready to score from this position. And so we can see 2767 ends up with a three and a half piece because they're able to maximize the amount of time they save while using their bumpers here, making sure that they don't collide with their center robot here, as well as since they're picking up from the coral station, taking from the edge of the coral station rather than going to the middle, as that's another time save. And that ends up giving 2767 a three and a half piece auto. And in case you don't know what a half piece is, when a robot scores three pieces, it's called a three piece. And the half is from where they have picked up a coral already to start their teleop cycling. So they've done half of the cycle already for themselves in the auto. Next up, we have Team 7407, who is one of the most premier teams in New England and one of, the, I think, the best teams in the world as well. So as we'll see them start, again, we see the same idea of, let's put a bumper on the starting line. As they press go, we'll see them do the exact same idea here of, we're going to put our coral into that number one uh, branch on the right side so that, again, we can see it much clearer from this side. If 747 was to do the left branch, they'd end up hitting 8089 and potentially causing their auto to miss just because they wanted to try to shorten their cycle a bit. So instead, 
they go for the coral that Strike Force also went for. And we can see, again, it's a little bit of a weird angle, but you can see that they're as close to this wall as possible as they're doing the same thing Strike Force does by trying to maximize the time that they have in auto. Again, they go for the two coral directly in front of themselves, very similar to Strike Force, and the ideology is very similar, which explains why both these teams do end up with three and a halfs or almost three and a halfs in 74 Sun's case. And again, we just see how incredibly important it is to try to maximize as much time as possible, as in Strike Force's case, they were actually able to pull off a three and a half, but in 74 Sun's case, even due to a little bit of slowness, they weren't able to pull off the three and a half, showing you just how important the time that you save in auto is. And in 74 Sun's case, they are an open alliance team, and they have shown that they can do more pieces than this. However, they've chosen in, for Waterbury to go for consistency over speed. So they do have a four-piece prepped, which I'm very excited to check out next time that they play. Now, let's check out two of the most premier teams in Canada, Team Dave, 3683, and Team 2056, OP Robotics, who, both of whom don't need any introduction. They are Canadian powerhouses and have been for a while. So, both of these teams actually are currently some of the best in their auto EPA as of March 9th. So, if we look at them, let's check out what they do in the starting. And something that we're going to notice is different here is that while 2056 has gone for the standard, let's put our bumper against the line, Team Dave has actually done something different, where they're putting only their bumper corner up on the line, which is legal. And the reason they're doing this is that now their bumper, cor bumper corner is now aligned with the reef, meaning that when we see them go, we're going to see that Team Dave actually doesn't need to do any rotation as they just translated over, and now they're immediately able to score. And so something else that we're going to see from Team Dave is that they're actually going to choose a score in a different branch than we've seen both teams so far who have done their L3. Team Dave is actually going to score in this first branch. And the reason why I suspect this is is because they just feel more comfortable with it, or they've chosen that as their auto. But whatever that case may be, it seems to be like 7623 has been told to stagger their auto or slow it down a little bit before going for the leaf points. Because, as we can see here, if Team Dave was to not move at all at this point, or 7623 was a little bit faster, then their bumpers would end up colliding, and that could lead to Team Dave missing their four-piece, which they will end up hitting this match. But what they end up choosing to do is ha having 7623 either stagger or have a slower auto in general, or drive out. And what this ends up letting D Team Dave do is just take the first branch here, and it's out, and the benefit that this provides you is that your two only far coral that you can really can't see are these two branches, as well as this third that is potentially going to have to get scored in Teleop. However, it makes only three branches that are really hard to see available instead of the normal four, which could be really interesting as a strategy. And something else that I've noticed on the other side of this is 2056's ground intake which I think might end up being how matches get defined in high levels of play when we start seeing reefs getting full, fully filled up and auto points end up mattering a lot. This ground intake will make or break a lot of teams. So, as we can see, we, there's a coral on the ground that their human player has tossed for them. Now, my personal opinion is that after looking at the human play stations, I think you might be able to get some coral bouncing all the way into potentially here which makes me think that we might see a robot end up with like a seven-piece L4 if they're able to be fast enough, and the coral is just bouncing at the perfect angle, as you could have a robot just sit here, pick up a coral, go score, go score, go score, and they essentially don't have to move to the coral station at all to pick up at all if they have that ground intake and their coral is bouncing at the right angle. So what we're going to see 2056 do here is they're going to go pick up that coral, and boom, and instantly up. And as we can see, they're limiting this entire time of we have to optimize getting to the coral station and staying on the right side to make sure we have the least amount of time. And instead, they're just getting it dropped in front of them. So instead of having to wait for the human player at all, it's already there waiting for them, and they're taking up even more time out of their cycles. So we can see Team Dave as well go up and go down. And so Team Dave, again, is doing the same strategy that we've seen 2767 and 747 do when you're collecting from the coral station where you're going as close to the sidewall as you can, just to optimize as much time as you can. And so, we're going to see, at the end here, what these guys end up doing is, with a four-piece that 2056 is able to pull off, they choose to go to the middle here, instead of to the far 
branch of this reef. And the reason that is, is because there's not really enough time to go all the way over here. And whereas it's a lot easier for you to just rotate your robot a tiny bit and translate it over and just put it up in this middle branch here, rather than having it have to do a bunch more rotation and then line up and then go up to this branch, which I don't think is feasible in the amount of time as they score this last piece with barely any time left on the clock. And we can see that actually Teams Dave pathing in auto is one, two, three, and then four, which I think is really interesting, which means that they've clearly thought about this, right? They're not just saying, oh, we're going to do the far ones first, and then we're going to do the close ones second, right? Instead, they've deliberately chosen to have it in a way where they take this one out first, because then their center robot is going to be staggered and won't be able to affect their auto at all, no matter what, right? And then after, they'll do these two because of the closest, and they'll confirm those. And then for their final piece, which maybe it hits, maybe it doesn't because there's barely any time on the clock left, they'll go back to fill in the piece that they thought they should have had earlier, right, on, on the far side, which I think is a really interesting way to think about it. Now, let's move on to one of the best teams in the world. It's Team 1690. They don't need an explanation. We've already covered them on this channel. They are incredible. Let's just watch it, what they do, and see how they do it. So, first thing to note, they are starting off with their bumpers on the line over here. This is actually their second event, so they have had time to iterate on this auto, and it has only gotten better, and it's incredible. So, let's watch what they do. First thing, again, we see something very interesting, where they say, do the same thing as Dave, except they just say, we don't care. We think we're just going to be faster than our center robot at doing this because we're just orbit and we're that good. So they they don't really care about the fact that they're scoring here or scared of their bumpers getting knocked at all because, you know, if I was orbit and I had the same type of camera system and all the software there, then I wouldn't be scared either because the way they're collecting off the field, it looks like they know where everything is always. And it's very impressive. So they have the same type of collection off the ground system that 2056 is doing, right? And we'll see that they'll go up for a piece. And again, the further that you can throw this piece on the ground, like this one looks a little bit further to me than 2056 was throwing, and I think it can go even further still. And so we're going to see them put up another piece just in front of them. And again, go in front of you whenever you can. After you're done going in front of you, let's move to the middle because it's a cleaner swoop. And something I think is really interesting here is that they don't imply the Team Dave's strategy of let's take this last one, last piece out, which might be a cause of them thinking that we want to confirm this middle piece, L4 here, instead of trying to risk this other piece here because we think we can just get that in teleop anyways and it's not really a problem. All right, so they just hit the L4 and they're almost at four and a half piece. It's... This robot is ridiculous. The ground intake, once people start figuring out how to get that coral even further, again, seven pieces are absolutely on the board. So, what does all this mean for us? People who do not have the incredible robots that Orbit has, or the incredible software that 2056 has, to just pick up off the ground. Well, we can think about where are we scoring the coral on the, bar, on the reef, right? So, for example... All the teams, right? If you're doing a side one piece, I think that the best possible thing for your consistency would just be to go for this branch or this branch. As we've seen that when you're going for those branches, your bumpers shouldn't really be touching anybody, right? And you should be able to just get those consistently. Another thing to note, if, are you picking up off the station or are you picking off the ground? If you're picking off the ground, try to experiment, right? See how far you can launch that coral and where your robot can pick it up. And see how close you can get your robot to the reef and just keep trying to hit those cycles. If you can't do that and you're like most other people and pick up from the coral station, try to get your robot in auto to just stand over here on the sides, right? Instead of going to the middle, let's move over some. Let's try to shave off those extra seconds. That'll give us that extra half piece or full piece and give you those extra seven points or the extra cycle in telly that you might need to win a match, right? And then again, right? We see every team always is going for these two pieces in front of them as the side auto. If you're able to spend some time and you're able to get these two side pieces going for your auto, right in front of you, baby, 
That's exactly where you need to go. Don't overcomplicate it for yourself. There's no reason to go on these backsides, right? Even though you might make it a little bit easier for your teleop, just take these two in front, and you're perfect. But let's say you don't have a side auto. What can we do as a center robot instead to help maximize with these guys? And what I've essentially thought of and come up with is an idea of an auto that doesn't really seem like an auto. Where, let's say we have a team in the middle here, right? And we're going to start in the center line, and we're going to go forward. And our goal in auto, what can we do? Well, we have two options. We're either going to, or we have three options, rather. We're either going to score a coral, and we're going to stay here and do nothing. That's one option. Or, we're going to score a coral, and try to enter the coral station from the center, which could cause a lot of issues with other autos, and deconflicting those can be really, really hard and painful, and I don't think that we're ever going to see a center robot that's genuinely trying to get into the coral station with any success at all, because of the fact that these two robots on the side are just going to be there most of the time, and it's just going to be more pain that's worth in points. So what can you do instead? Well, my idea is that there's always an algae there, no matter what. So what if we score an L4 up here, and then have your robot de algify and have a barge auto? Because that way, as algae are points that anyone on the field can get, right? So you have your coral that is just yours, right? You have your coral stations, and these are only fed to your robot, so you have essentially a max amount of points that you can score with coral on both alliances that is the same. However, Stealing algae, as we've seen, can be really, really useful, right? So, instead of stealing algae, let's make sure they can't steal our algae. And so, instead of just sitting around here waiting for nothing to happen, instead, let's take this algae, let's walk it over to the barge, and let's just score it in. Might as well maximize the points that we have in auto if we can't do it, even though there might not be an auto bonus to it, and it's just worth the same amount of points as teleop. You'd rather have that time being used for something rather than just sitting around and doing nothing. So that's why I think that some teams, if they're able to do a barge, that they should be focusing on that center auto and going for that algae into barge. Because I think that's really big if you're an algae robot to just be able to take one off there already instead of just sitting in the center and just being kind of useless instead. So I suspect that as we move further along in competition, we might see some algae autos, even though there's no bonus. But all the principles applied here are, I think, really helpful. That was another episode of Robo Replay. Please let me know how what you thought of it, if you found it helpful at all, or just any general comments you want to give. I think that auto and the little minuscule things inside of auto are really what make and break the best teams in the world from the teams that are really, really good. And so those small differences, as you inch yourself up in auto, with only 15 seconds in auto total to make any actions, Every single second counts, so make sure to maximize all those seconds. So that's what we ran over here. So, again, I was at a competition at this past week two of the comp season. So, if you have any events or any matches that you'd like me to check out and watch and like strategize and see what they're doing, try to break it down for you guys. Please let me know. I would love to get some more matches as I don't have nearly enough that I have seen yet, or as much as I want to see from week two. So, again, that was another episode of Real World Replay. Have a lovely day, and thank you for watching.